Hey everyone, Kuro the Artist here, and welcome back to another Ben 10 Breakdown. After the conclusion of the Ultimate Kevin arc, Ultimate Alien felt pretty aimless in direction, where it shelled out a couple of one-off adventures that didn't really land, which you can see all the reviews for on our second channel, The Rust Bucket, linked below. So when you stumble across a title like Ben 10,000 Returns, especially after being starved for an actual good episode, this one's surely viewed with high expectations. Not only that, but this episode includes direct elements from the 2007 live-action film Race against time. Having a film from a different version of the show in an entirely different medium connect so directly to the series proper is pretty compelling. It's clear that this story is already a tall order. We're introduced to the animated version of Eon, who was conceptualized at first just for the film as an original character. But not only is Eon brought into the show, it's literally the same Eon, as in the one at the end of Race Against Time has traveled into the multiverse and ended up in the animated series. Pretty crazy, right? Although he does come with some changes, such as having his backstory tweaked along with his goals, but we'll get to that later. The true highlight of this episode is the debut of Ultimate Ben, the future version of our hero that has unlocked the power to utilize his transformation's abilities while still in human form. It's a new and distinctive way of showing an evolution of Ben's powers. Ultimate Ben's personality is still pretty similar to Ben's present day self, but he also shines as an experienced hero when the time comes. Although compared to the other two versions of Ben 10,000, this one is widely the most unfavored, and I have to agree. With my own thoughts at play here, transforming into aliens is what makes Ben cool, and it doesn't have to go any further. That's why I don't really like any gimmicks. Fusions, Omni Kicks, Ultimate Forms, the Shock Rock stuff, it's all just nonsense to me. Ben transforming into aliens is the gimmick. He doesn't need any of that extra stuff. He evolves by unlocking more aliens and finding new ways to use his older ones, along with improving his tactical skills and maintaining a positive and inspiring public identity. I know I may be in the minority here, but giving Ben all these extra gimmicks kind of ruins what Ben stands for in the first place, where it's the aliens themselves that matter, and those are what he uses to be a hero, not the aliens plus like a new suit of armor or an ultimate version of them. There's also the fact that Ultimate Ben's aesthetics are pretty lame in comparison. Using his aliens while in human form already opens up a lot of questions, like how does goop work, or swamp fire, or Echo Echo. And to make things even stranger, we see him slightly change his body when using Ultimate Humungasaur, but not any other alien. So this implies a standard that Ben's form could change if needed, but we don't see it used with any other alien. Even aliens that seem like they should have at least some change, like Jet Ray or Diamond Head. I always felt that Ultimate Ben would be improved drastically if he slightly changed with all of his forms, as illustrated by this incredibly dated drawing. But a much better example would be Blair's Ben 10 AU. There's a lot of art online of this version, including a very impressive animatic, which I will link below. Something like this is definitely a better way to do something like the Ultimate Ben concept. But Ultimate Ben really isn't that bad. But if we're gonna talk about him further, let's just jump into the breakdown. So if this is your first breakdown and you're curious about how my rating system works, there's a detailed description down below, along with a link to all my previous breakdowns, but by all means, watch this one first, I'm sure you'll still enjoy it. And also releasing today is a breakdown version of our latest episode of and beyond based on ledger domain this will be our first time reviewing something we've made ourselves and this experiment came out pretty fun this one will also be linked below so check it out if you get a chance but for now on to the breakdown Dwayne McDuffie surprises us by writing another non-season finale episode with Ben 10,000 returns first premiering April 15th 2011 after eon battles a future version of Ben paradox arrives to warn him that eon has traveled back in time to defeat a younger version of him him. So the two travel back in time as well to warn the present day trio and destroy the hands of Armageddon to stop Eon from carrying out his master plan. So frame one, we're introduced to future Bellwood, where you can see Ben 10,000's tower. Obviously very similar to Azmuth's tower, as he probably even had a hand in putting it together. But at least artistic-wise, Ben's tower looks much cooler than Azmuth's, although it's probably just because it has more detail. But the classic series definitely has the best tower. And we're 20 years in the future, making Ben 36 right now. <laughs> Now we see Eon's animated appearance. Honestly, I wouldn't have been able to tell this was Eon if they didn't point it out. It's a neat design, but I'm just a bigger fan of the Race Against Time interpretation. In fact, everything about Race Against Time Eon is my favorite. Above UA and Omniverse's Eon, especially Christian and Holt's portrayal of Eon. You see, I am a prisoner of time, as is my race. But not for long. The voice, the mannerisms, they're very unique for a Ben 10 villain. Here he's kind of just 
another dude. Coward, you can't hide from me! Now, as it will later be revealed that this is also a future Ben, you'd think he'd be voiced by the same actor all the way through. But if you pitch up Eon's voice when he's wearing the helmet, it sounds like Yuri Lowenthal. Just a little bit, though. Coward, you can't hide from me! It's a little tough to hear. Maybe if I get, like, the... Coward, you can't hide from me! I'll try again on a different clip. Not hiding. I'm making an entrance. And Ben 10,000, first being voiced by Fred Tatasciore, is now voiced by Sean Donnellan in Ultimate Alien. His voice fits very well, and I do think Sean does a great job. But Ultimate Alien has already used Fred Tatasciore a handful of times, so he is available, so I wonder why he was swapped out for Sean. Attacking me all by yourself, in my own headquarters. Yeah, see, I dig it. You call that a plan? And he is written very much within UA's personality. Like, this does feel like Ben speaking. I don't need a plan to defeat you. Yeah, see, let me try pitching this one up. I don't need a plan to defeat you. They had Yuri voice Eon right up until he took off the helmet, and then he's Sean. <laughs> Eon's time ray also returns from the film. Dust particle effects looks pretty good. Yeah, see, I like how they draw a model of it all aged up before they crumple it to dust. Not really a fan of the electrical assets around his energy, though. I don't think UA really cared about their energy effects as intricately as, like, Classic or Omniverse would. And incidentally, I didn't come alone. Alright, one more test. And incidentally, I didn't come alone. And Eon's servants show up, too. Very different appearance from the live-action film. <laughs> Good techniques. I like that we're getting Ben 10,000 fighting in his human form to show how strong and skilled he's become. I think if he immediately transformed, there would be like a slight disconnect in the fact that this is Ben. Whoa! Close call. So, this Ben 10,000 uses a device that looks exactly like the Alien Force Omnitrix. And it's never explained why. It's not even questioned by any of the characters in universe. And honestly, I feel like that's just laziness with the design. Like, they don't want to have to come up with a whole new device for him. A lot of times, I give the franchise a pass for reusing assets, animation, character models, what have you, just to save time. But this is something you really got to commit to, you know? If you're going to give us a future Ben, we're expecting a little more something-something with him, you know? And the design itself is already pretty, I don't know, just not as interesting looking as the classic one. So you'd at least hope the device would make up for it. Well, honestly, I don't even know what this device is supposed to be. Is it supposed to be the Ultimatrix, but reskinned? Is it an entirely new device. Like, it's a bit tasteless just to give him the Alien Force Omnitrix, and it also opens up a ton of questions. So it's a lose-lose. Ultimate Humongousaur! So we see him just twist the device. The ultimate ring passes around him. Seems like it only goes on top and doesn't connect down here, though. But then once he moves his arm out of the way, the Ultimatrix symbol is shown. We get a giant holographic projection of Ultimate Humongousaur, which admittedly is a dope visual. I mean, this is just fucking dope. And you can see that the device is now gone. You don't actually see the device swap from his hand to his chest, though. It's just the chest is revealed once the arm is gone, and then you zoom out, and it's off the hand. So it's like a sleight of hand transition. And I think this is like the only transformation where he actually changes his body, where he grows into the humongous or shape, which it looks a bit goofy. But yeah, all the other aliens, he simply gains their powers and he doesn't change his body type at all. I think he'd be able to shoot the missile fingers though. Artiguana. Now this was cool to see, because not only is Artiguana being used outside of the classic series, but it's through yet another Ben 10,000. But compared to the Ultimate Humongousaur hologram, where you basically do see all of his details, the Artiguana hologram is kept more vague, as they were probably afraid to commit to an official design for Artiguana in UA, in case they changed their minds later. Kind of like how they changed Ripjaw's design from the opening to when he actually showed up. There's more! Heat Blast! Now this hologram is different because the flames are actually animated. Like these holograms are somehow active, which is a neat visual, but again, opens up more questions. Also, all of Ultimate Ben's aliens look very similar to his 16 year old counterparts rather than getting a mature form for them. And I think this is the only time we see Heat Blast with the rock coated hands rather than the exposed magma. <laughs> Impressive. I enjoy that we're getting a lot of aliens, though, as a future Ben should be quick changing all the time. In all my years hunting alternate versions of you, I've never met one with your abilities. And there's his new motivation. Rather than trying to bring his Cronian people into Ben's dimension through the hands of Armageddon, this one's just kind of hunting down Ben's. We were a gilded race of warriors and destroyed ourselves. With the hands of Armageddon, we could be reborn on Earth. When we fought before, we... That wasn't me, Tennyson. So it sounds like they're referring to Race Against Time, whereas this is Race 
Race Against Time Ben, and Eon's response that wasn't me is saying that was a different Eon. But on the contrary, this isn't Race Against Time Ben, and this is Race Against Time Eon. So I kind of don't get Eon's line right here where he's saying that wasn't me. Before we- That wasn't me, Tennyson. Cause it was. Like who else would it be? Clockwork! Awesome. And we get a new alien through a Ben 10,000. This made it kind of mysterious because we only see his hologram. Yet if you notice, he does have much more detail. Kind of hinting that Teen Ben will get him because he has an official design. It's also neat seeing it as a looking down view. <laughs> this is pretty sick. <laughs> And this disintegration effect is pretty sweet. All the clunks disappearing. He's missing his cape in this shot, though. Probably would have been too tricky to animate. But yeah, we've seen what time rays do in this very episode. And if Ben's hitting him with one, is Ben trying to kill Eon? Or does he just know he'll survive this? And then here, we see the Ultimatrix shoot out its ring and put itself back into the device, but we're seeing both devices at the same time. I, I just, I don't know how that works. And it bothers me, you know, between the absolute mess the regular Ultimatrix is and then this. It's like the show is trying to convince you to not care about the device and just accept whatever happens. But then like, why come up with all these rules in the first place? <laughs> Hello, Ben! Also another first. The first time we're seeing Paradox visit a Ben that's not Ben Prime. We do seem to spend less time together since everybody got their licenses. Not really, y'all are always together. In fact, Gwen should have her own car by now, too. Tracking down the source of the mystery transmission your Ultimatrix found. Or it's broken again. See, even Ben's like, fuck the Ultimatrix. The Bellwood Museum. Which was first shown in Duped. <laughs> This is a cool use of Kevin's powers, too. His shapeshifting is not only a combat advantage. Tracking feature. Neat. There's probably a crowbar around somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the way he cuts her off with that? Seems like an edit, but that's really what happens. We already broke into the museum. What's the big deal? God, I love Kevin. And now the animated version of the Hands of Armageddon. Looks pretty much the same. Would be better if it had its spheres, though. Also seems to be made of uh, stone texture rather than metallic. In 5YL, I tried to cover that by saying every universe's Hands of Armageddon is made from a different material. Because this isn't the Hands of Armageddon from Race Against Time. This is the Prime Continuity's hands. So I guess they don't have to be exactly the same. That's weird. Interesting effect. <laughs> Sudden ninjas. <laughs> Mana Whip! Her mouth doesn't move during her vocalizations. Interesting that these swords can't burn through Spider Monkey's rope. Spider Monkey was a lot bigger in that shot. What's the big deal? Don't know what they wanted. You didn't win. Maybe you missed it. Bad guy. Completely vaporized. Interesting that Ben's thinking on the situations have sort of regressed in the future. Here at 16 years old, he's skeptical if he really won or not because it seemed too easy. Whereas in the future, he's confident that he won because it was too easy. You merely knocked him down your own timeline. Do you think he tricked me? Into sending him into your own past. Did Eon really need Ultimate Ben for that though? Like, can't he just travel to that moment on his own free will? I've got do something. You already are. And this is pretty cool how we're following two different stories happening at the same time, but they're across two different timelines. Note how he didn't say you already did, but you already are. I've gotta do something. You already are. Because for Paradox, all of time is happening at once. I'm gonna try a spell of revelation. <laughs> So it's been theorized that this is the race against time versions of the characters and not the actual prime versions past because they're looking in through a window in the hands of Armageddon. You did a spell to show the past? No, it's just supposed to reveal secrets. What a nifty spell. Who's that? Now they're seeing the future too. Except this is the future of their current timeline, at least for now. So perhaps this really is their past? Honestly, this episode makes a lot more sense if you just ignore race against time entirely. But because it's pulling a lot of elements from that film, it's kind of hard to. At least for the fans of the franchise that try to consider all of the media fairly. I don't remember that happening. Maybe it was time travel. Good guess. God, does Ben really have this much more growing to do? How is this even possible? It's gotta be taking the same kind of steroids Cooper is. Like the muscular thing, sure. I mean, that's pushing it, but all right, fine. Maybe he gets ripped in the future, but this height difference? He's already 16. How much taller can he get? I'm you. Only even more awesome. Such a Ben thing to say. Also shows that even though this is him in the future, his personality is pretty settled in. But I guess his testosterone keeps going. 
Also, when they come back from commercial, they're shaking with opposite hands from when he started. Here, they're shaking with their right. Now, they're shaking with their left. Ben 10,000 at your service. And this is after it's revealed he has over a million aliens, so Ben 10,000 seems like an obligatory title for a future Ben. But now it's kind of meaningless, because not only does he have more than 10,000 aliens, he doesn't even transform anymore. I'm a different Ben 10,000. What a buzzkill that guy was. And that reaction there could show why he's so different from that version, because he's already seen a future where he becomes very stern and distant from his friends and family. So Ben probably tried to maintain his lightheartedness growing into adulthood. Eh, it seems to be working out for him. You're my real future. If nothing occurs to change it. Oh, and it will. One time, when I was president of Earth. <laughs> this Ben just doesn't give a fuck about spoiling the future. Also, president of Earth. You'd think that'd be an ambiguous future throwaway line. But come Omniverse, that comes back around, and Argent's the president of Earth. To defeat the third Vilgaxian invasion. Do you think when Vilgax challenged Ben in Alien Force, that counted as the first Vilgaxian invasion? It turned out that Gwen was better at the day-to-day -day stuff. Another thing that sounds like ambiguous future talk, but is actually used later on, at least in the reboot continuity, Gwen does become president of Earth. If in Indeed, they survive the present threat. See, Paradox is always so sure things are gonna work out, but this time, he doesn't seem as sure. It's a subtle way of showing how high the stakes are, because now, the timeline isn't playing its natural course. Back to the desert. All strapped in. Do you think Ultimate Ben is also using forearms right now? We're headed to the middle of nowhere. One only hopes it's far enough. In that case, why not just go to a distant planet? Like, they're in the Rust Bucket 3 right now. They can go anywhere, but they're sticking to Earth. Ben met himself in the future, but it wasn't this guy. You traveled into cross time. So the way this is phrased is it sounds like the classic Ben 10,000 was never his future from the start, rather than it having have been his future. But due to that interaction, it changed. That's why the me in the future didn't remember it happening to him before. Although with that logic, it does make sense. Because it is pretty strange that if the Ben 10,000 we met in Classic was Ben's true future, at least at that time, that he didn't remember it happening. Because unlike Ben again, where a similar situation happened and their memories got wiped at the end, Ben always remembers that instance because the timeline didn't rewrite. So even if this episode didn't outright state it, strictly based on the Classic era, a case could be made that that was never Ben's future from the start. And Gwen 10,000 may have messed up the spell and instead of just going back in time, went to a completely different universe back in time. But, but you, you remember, remember all, all of this. this. And now this Ben 10,000 does have memories of the past because he is Ben Prime's true future, at least for now. Cross time is made up of parallel versions of the history we know. So this is a pretty infamous scene that I've referenced in dozens of videos. So we're just going to get through it real quick. A world where Gwen found the Omnitrix. A reference to the episode Gwen 10. Where Albedo turned to Alien X and was trapped motionless. A reference to the DS version of Vilgax attacks. Where you didn't have to destroy the Omnitrix to defeat Vilgax. Now that's probably talking about goodbye and good riddance, but because it pans up to him to say it, along with you literally seeing the alien force Omnitrix on his wrist, it's almost like Paradox is implying that he comes from that future. So since he didn't blow up the Omnitrix to defeat Vilgax and alien force, he kept the alien force Omnitrix. But that can't be true, because for one, this Ben can go ultimate, and for two, this Ben remembers this Ben's experiences, so he is from this Ben's future. So this? Mmm. I do not like that. I do not like that one bit. These worlds are all every bit as real as our own. I do like that though because it like canonizes all of those alternate things in a way. By saying they exist, they just exist in the multiverse. Which is something a lot of franchises don't really do. Like separate media is just separate media and that's that. Which brings us to our problem. The Hand of Armageddon. Slight error, but that's supposed to be plural. It's hands of Armageddon. It's a cross-time gateway. You saw into one of them with your spell. Okay, that implication could also be taken as what they saw was the Race Against Time universe. Because if it is a cross-time gateway, and then they say, you saw into one of them with your spell. That's implying that that was not their past. So yeah, if you didn't see Race Against Time, this episode still kind of makes sense, but there's less threads for you to connect. If you remember that, if you remember this whole adventure, what's the problem? Again, always love when they just directly bring up stuff like that too, because stuff like that's hard to ignore. Because because I'm you 20 years from now, if we lose, the future ceases to be. And boom, loophole solved. Doesn't take much to acknowledge these speculations, and I love whenever the show goes through the extra effort to address them. I'll see you good people on the ground, probably. Yeah, Paradox is still unsure of the future, and when Paradox is unsure, that's scary. But now the hands are activating on their own, something that the Race Against Time hands couldn't do. And levitation? Yeah. No. This is a very dark hologram right here. It's almost like these are Goop's true colors and not the hologram colors. The one time I wanted laugh. Well, maybe if you looked at the dial before you transformed. <laughs> That's a cool move. Sending out an expanding sphere. Can't wait for that to never come back. 
assuming that's Artiguana again, but we've seen him use Artiguana and it comes from the mouth. Here it's coming out of his hand, so I want to say this was Big Chill. Another hologram in full detail. Yeah, this is, I mean, the hologram things are cool. But one of the best parts about classic Ben 10,000 was seeing how the aliens look when they're older. Showing the hologram, but them still looking like 16 year old Ben's aliens. It's just a bit of a letdown. <laughs> Need to see him combine his martial arts with arachnachimp agility. This effect for them coming out of the portal is pretty cool. They animated a quick little aura of them along with a digital flash. I like that. Now the ultimate humongousaur hologram is in a different pose the second time it comes around. We see him grow. Yeah, he gets like those humongousaur knuckles and stuff. I'd be a lot more accepting of this Ben if he changed with his other aliens, but the fact that he only does for this one is pretty strange. It's also the only ultimate alien he uses, I think. Does Eon equip them with all these ninja things too? Like why throwing stars? <laughs> Tiny thing, but you'd think Goop's anti-gravity projector would be able to resist this. Jet Ray! See, the fact that he doesn't connect his wings and stuff, he just hovers and flies, that's not how Jet Ray works. I mean, if anything, turn into a flying alien that does just kind of hover. I also don't think Jet Ray has this level of super strength either. So he lands this whole thing with Jet Ray. And yeah, I guess Jet Ray's just super strong now. Whoa, twice in one day. Or was it twice in 20 years? I actually really like that line. You just landed a spaceship. From the outside. Don't forget the cool part. You know, I really want to hear Sean in something else. All right, joke joke. Joke joke. Three guys are having an argument which one's the best lover. We have an Italian guy, a Polish guy, and a Jewish guy. Okay, maybe not that one. Huh, Rao. Slim pickings for Sean Donnellan. What else is he in? Uh, Wonder Woman TV series. What is this? I'll give it a shot. And none of these really look like what I'm trying to find. I don't know. I'll, I'll keep looking when I'm editing. How do you do all that without transforming? Ultimate Ben? You'll figure it out someday. Except he doesn't. But also none of these events really affect the Dagon arc, right? Like Ben's still gonna use Ascalon to defeat Dagon Gax. Asmuth is still making the official Omnitrix and will probably give it to Ben after that arc. So why does this Ben keep the Ultimatrix? Did Asmuth Smith never deem him worthy, and he found a different way to defeat Dagon Gax? Yo, that could be a good story. Yeah, maybe he's on shit terms with Asmuth for life, and thus Asmuth never gave him the new Omnitrix, so Ben has been stuck with the Ultimatrix his whole life, and has just been making it work. So why did we fly the hand of- to destroy it. So presumably this is the paradox that just came from a few scenes ago, right? Yet he's responding to Kevin's question as if he heard it. I wanna try something. Like in Paradox's perspective, isn't this how things happened? I'll see you good people on the ground. Probably. To destroy it. Paradox just, he's an enigma, all right. Eon, a creature from the cross time earth Gwen showed you with her spell. Okay. They do officially say it's the Race Against Time one then. So it's not just a theory, it's it's a fact. And Paradox does call him a creature, so maybe Paradox still thinks he's a Cronian. Is that a lie then? Do Cronians not really exist? Because if that's really the Race Against Time Earth, and that really is the same Eon, then what happened to all the Cronian shit? At last, my great race will rise from its dark sleep. Eon was defeated by the Ben of that world when he destroyed their version of the hand. By using Wild Mud to grab a time-frozen Gwen and smacking him into it. Let's not leave that out. He was instead thrown out of that reality and into cross time. A pretty smart way of being able to continue Eon's story without undoing everything, unlike what they did in Revenge of the Swarm. I feel like this is at least still respectful to that film, whereas Revenge of the Swarm was just like, yeah, none of that was actually happening. Also, Elena and Victor are dead. Moving from one parallel Earth to the next, taking down every Ben 10 he can find. Oh yeah, isn't that the plot to Alien Extinction? Wouldn't that have been wild if that Alien X was revealed to have been an Eon who finally gained access to Alien X? I do like Alien Extinction's backstory for that too though. But I mean that would be a great way to connect the prime continuity to the reboot. He needs an operational hand of Armageddon, so we're gonna bust it throughout space and time. Why didn't destroying the hands in Race Against Time destroy every version? <laughs> Way big and clockwork used together. It's funny how this doesn't become cool until in retrospect, because at this moment we still don't really know clockwork. But like two of Ben's most powerful aliens in the same scene used together, pretty sweet. <laughs> And their beams look different too. I really appreciate that. What did Way Big's beam look like in Absolute Power though? Oh yeah, it looked the same there too. Special effect consistency. 
No, I've been deceived. Stop! Wow, Paradox didn't see something coming, and he's afraid. This is the most out of the loop we've ever seen, Paradox. <laughs> kind of sounded like Chroma Stone sound effects. This is a cool energy ripple, though. <laughs> Guess who? <laughs> oh, that was crazy when I first saw this. I was like, what? Did they really just kill Ben? Like, of course they'd figure out a way to bring him back, but like, I felt like he straight up vaporized Ben here. But we later find out that isn't even what happened here. Also, Way Big is so big that he disintegrates in parts. The animation of him blown away is pretty good, too. Now what really sold this scene for me though, was seeing Paradox so shocked too. Like nothing phases this man. Yeah, and you come back from commercial break and just see that it was Ben in there. But yeah, that doesn't make a lick of sense. Except we have seen similar things though. Like Chroma Stone being hidden inside of Diamond Head. Then later on we'll see Ben get ripped out of feedback. But it always is Ben literally turning into these forms. Like there is no Ben inside of these aliens, especially the small ones. Like that wouldn't even make sense. So this has to be some kind of failsafe for the Ultimatrix and Omnitrix too. Like maybe it can detect the vaporization of Ben and thus it boots him out of the transformation. I don't know, just another mystery of the the infinite ways the Ultimatrix doesn't make sense. I'm afraid he's gone. <clears throat> what a freaking leap! What? And he wasn't even transformed as Spider Monkey. And here he is stepping on the ashes of Ben's dead transformation. <laughs> And finally, Ultimate Swamp Fire is used for a cool scenario. Aside from going up against Greg, in which he immediately got whooped, Ben seems to only use Ultimate Swamp Fire against weak foes and Ultimate Alien. The rock people, the plant people. I guess the Andromeda Five are, you know, worthy opponents. But I am biased, you know, because I love Swamp Fire. <laughs> the gooey seeds or whatever always look different when they're thrown out. See the different dark blue textures it has when it's on him compared to how they look once they're ejected. <laughs> The swords are animated pretty nice. Wrong color for Kevin, though. Accelerate! That was awesome, seeing another classic series alien, but again, one drawn without a committed design, slowly signifying that Ben's not gonna use Accelerate anytime soon. Look at him go! Hell yeah. See, this way he could have transformed with like at least the balls on his feet or something, right? Prepare to die, baby later. What a response. Right behind you! Ultimate Swamp Fire's got super speed too. Our paths are intertwined in every other timeline. I can kind of hear Yuri there too, even without the pitch shift. <laughs> At least he went back to base form and then vaporizes. But this dust effect is different from the first time. The first time it was drawn. This one's a, a digital effect. Still looks pretty good though. <laughs> Diamond doesn't particularly age. I don't like that line though. With the countless times the crew has to tell people that Diamond Head isn't literally made of diamonds. Then they throw this line in there. I came here to destroy your younger self. Do you think if he did destroy Ben Prime, then Ultimate Ben would vaporize too? Like a Back to the Future thing where he'd fade away? Or are their timelines so disconnected now that Ben Prime could be vaporized and Ultimate Ben would still survive? Go take him. That was pretty hype too. Like what? This is another one of those things that's a lot cooler without any buildup. Like if he just whips this out. Contigo! I think Contigo is a real spell though. Well by real I mean like it was used before. Oh, actually not yet. It will be used again in the future by Gwen and then Darkstar. But this is the first appearance of it. You hang around an Anodyne for 20 years, you pick up a few tricks. But he's 20 years in this future. Does the time he spent with Gwen so far not count? Or maybe he's saying like after this, Gwen starts teaching Ben magic. And accelerate again. You know, something this is even the exact same frame of accelerate, I believe. Actually, no, maybe not. I don't know. No, it, it is redrawn. I'm mistaken. But they did draw him in the same pose between the two holograms, unlike what they did with Ultimate Humongosaur. Weird that they don't talk. I mean, most mooks y'all fight don't talk. Then let's take a look. Statue up! <laughs> She could just do that? I'm not even gonna get into it. Y'all already know. These things are pretty ripped though. This is like Ben after he's been working out. But of course this Ben has the exact same haircut as Ben too. I mean, I get that they made it look exactly like UAF Ben to double down on the fact that these are alternate versions of Ben, but it would have been acceptable if he looked a little bit different. This raises some questions. Like where did you learn ninjutsu? From Gwen. You're not destroying Ben Tennyson's, you're absorbing them. That's quite the conclusion to jump to though. I wouldn't say absorbing, maybe enslaving. Like even if he is literally absorbing them, how did ultimate Ben immediately deduce that just from this? 
where I will be the only Ben Tennyson that exists. I did not like that reveal. Not even when this first aired. Not just because it overwrites all the crony and stuff, it's also just kind of stupid. This was a bad move. What were y'all thinking with this? Like, aside from all of the obvious points on why this is cliche, a and, strange twist, and yada yada, but like, that's never gonna happen. He's never gonna kill every single Ben Tennyson. The multiverse is infinite. They've stated that in this show. So this quest is stupid. Like, he's gonna have to kill Ben infinitely forever. He will never be done. What kind of goal is this? I will be the only Ben Tennyson that exists. Yeah, that's literally never going to happen. Unless you have something that destroys infinite timelines, like, say, a Chrono Sapien time bomb. Oh, yeah, you know what's funny? Isn't, and then there were none. Vilgax succeeds in Eon's goal destroying every single Ben 10,000 except for one. And Eon's even there to witness it happen. So yeah, I guess with the time bomb you can do it, because those things destroy things infinitely. It's like a multi-dimensional cosmic kind of thing. But if you're just going around the universe as some guy with an army, doing it one by one, one universe at a time, you will never be done. But should you dare proceed, there is nowhere in all of space and time you can hide from me. Paradox is flexing on him right now. I'll burn that bridge when I come to it. It's supposed to be cross that bridge, Ben. Come on. Burning bridges is when you sever a relationship. Crossing bridges is when it's time to deal with a task. You can't even get that right. Eon didn't come through the hand of Armageddon. He came from our watches. Is that implying he is a Cronian transformation then? Like, what does that mean? Like, everything this episode just built up is just gone. <laughs> That's awesome, though. <laughs> Oh boy, this is definitely the worst offender of Ultimate Ben not transforming. That's cool, that's like an Omniverse looking effect. So granted, Way Big and Clockwork did get this started, but this is telling me that Jet Ray's Neuroshocks are strong enough to destroy the hands of Armageddon throughout the multiverse. So Jet Ray's Neuroshocks can destroy a time device, his strength is enough to land a plane, his speed's enough to go to hyperspace. Jet Ray's got some feats. And they ain't gonna fall for that again, right? Like, they know Eon survived that. Eon is no more. Come on, Paradox. You're gonna fall for that, too. And that all of the cross-time worlds will shortly return to normal. And of course they will, right? Because why not? I can confirm that this is the original timeline. That's a pretty heavy line to be said so casually. Young Ben lost way big and both swamp fires today. I'll put them back in your playlist. I'm pretty bothered by this, too. That he's able to give Ben his transformations back just by inputting a bunch of codes. Like, it would have been neat to see his Omnitrix synchronized with Ben and you see some sort of like visual for a DNA transfer because if they were destroyed you can't just like type in a code and like get the alien back like the DNA is gone about giving me master control I'm already in enough trouble with asthma oh shit there you go builds on the theory more that this Ben never became worthy of the official Omnitrix I just unlocked everything you've ever become up until now finally so now the promos are accurate he can become any alien he's ever been. I also threw in a few new ones because it'll annoy Asmuth when he finds out. I love that too. Spite Nazmuth across the timeline. Plus it's an excuse to give Ben new aliens without it always having to be a big deal. Cause now it's like every time he gets a new alien, you could just assume it was from Ben 10,000. So they don't have to do a whole case and plot line for it. And it also doesn't have to feel random either. Like when he got Eye Guy. A warning. Beware old George. Beware the creature from beyond. Oh shit. Are, are we getting an arc again? This also would have been a much better setup if the episodes aired in the order they were produced. I'm reviewing these in production order, but when this originally aired, the Creature of Beyond had already come out, so this line was taken more as a reinforcement that that episode is more important than we might have thought, whereas here, in production order, it's foreshadowing that episode entirely. And you know, either way, I feel like it works, but this is the way that it was meant to be taken. It is so hero time. Less. How long has it been since he said that? The last time it was even said period was in Forge of Creation, and that was Young Ben. But what about this one? Yo, he hasn't said hero time since Fuse. Frickin' season one, episode eight. We're on season three, episode seven right now. It's been almost two seasons since he said what's supposed to be his catchphrase. All right, so we've met our second Ben 10,000. Should be a banger, right? But I'm only going to give the plot of this a three. The story was pretty engaging, at least at first, but then after a while it felt like it was just a giant 
excuse to get Ben 10,000 to show up again, which would have been fine, but the first two Ben 10,000 episodes had Ben 10,000, but also a neat narrative to give him something to do. This one just felt like a regular Ben 10 episode, but with Ben 10,000 in it, and granted, while the stakes were high, like again, I loved seeing Paradox not know what's going to happen. I don't know, it just, it suffers from the fatigue of the show going on this long. You know, even something like this doesn't feel as magnificent as it should have been. And while I want to say that's not a fault of the episode, the twist is kind of lame. And for a Ben 10,000 episode, it's much less grandiose compared to all the other ones. A lot of it was explaining time travel logic, and while it's always great to incorporate things from the live action movies, I was wrong, just like Revenge of the Swarm, who it takes the Race Against Time legacy and basically says none of that mattered. Eon's actually an alternate Ben, not a Cronian. His goal is to travel throughout time and be the only Ben out there, not to save his people. And the second he takes his helmet off, suddenly he's just so lame. The ninjas were also there just to keep the action scenes going. Honestly, I would have liked the ninjas not to be included at all so that it forces the characters to have a higher stake into what's happening. Like, most of the action scenes were made up of fighting off the ninjas, but I would have wanted more stuff with Eon. But stuff with Eon would have made things better. It would have made him feel more like a character. Like, if you think about it, they don't even explain how Eon was able to absorb those bends. And how does he get them to follow them? Is it like some type of brainwashing thing? Is he using an alien's power? Because if he is is a Ben, what happened to the Omnitrix? It opens up a ton of questions. It doesn't have that great of a plot, but it is still cool seeing Ben 10,000 again. And this Ben 10,000 is pretty great. His personality does feel like a more evolved version of UAF Ben. And he's flawed, but not flawed in a sense that the classic Ben was, where there's something wrong with him. He's flawed because he still shares the same flaws that Ben has, with his overexcitement, his overconfidence, but he's still clearly skillful. He knows magic now, which is pretty dope. He somehow unlocked the secrets of whatever device he's Holding. There was also a lot of missed opportunities for Ben interacting with his future self. Seeing the Ben that we follow play off of his future self is what made the Ben 10,000 episode originally so interesting. Whereas here, Ben's just accepting that he's there. And it does make sense, you know? It's not out of character, especially with all the shit Ben's seen. Of course, he's probably not surprised anymore, but it still leaves a lot to be desired. And of course, I really do think that the show ruins Eon and like every way. Visuals though do get a 4. There's a lot of things that are interesting here, but most of the visual score comes from the coolness factor. It's just great seeing a future Ben. It's great seeing Eon in the actual show. His new power set, while it's a bit of a letdown, there's still some concepts there that make it interesting, like seeing all the aliens come back, like Accelerate and Arctic Iguana. Foreshadowing Clockwork was dope. Seeing both of them try to destroy the hands of Armageddon. Ultimate Ben using magic, of course, that's like... I wasn't sure how I felt about that at first, but the more I think about it, I think it's pretty cool. It kind of makes sense for this version of Ben where he can like essentially do everything But it's also kind of nice that he's not Ben's true future anymore So that they can just play with this conceptual version of a Ben who's like president of earth and is now the ultimate Ben and can do everything Yeah, so I think he's okay because we know that Ben Prime isn't actually going to grow up to be him If this was Ben's true future, then it might be a bit more of a problem importance five, half because of the actual plot stuff, and the other just because it's like, you know, a Ben 10,000 episode, and of course it carries a huge weight in the Ben 10 community. It's just, you shouldn't miss this one. Gotta put that on the binge list. And entertaining, it's a five. It's a bit of a frustrating five, but the pros and the cons still engage the viewer in the episode. So that leaves this episode off at a 21 out of 25. So now, let's move on to the final thoughts. I used to think a cool fact about this episode was it was the only one to show classic, present day, and future Ben all in in one episode, even if they don't interact. But then Omniverse did that a hundred times over, so it became less cool. Anyways, for last week's poll, Absolute Power Part 2 by no surprise won out as the favorite of the three. But believe it or not, there is a period of time where Enemy of My Enemy had more votes than Absolute Power Part 1. But we're still left with these results anyways. For this week's poll, I'm asking which part of this episode was your favorite? The foreshadowing of Clockwork? Eon returning to the series, or Ben 10,000's new power set. Let me know what you think in the community tab when this video goes live. I hope you all have a fantastic weekend, and as always, keep it fizzy.